It doesn't matter if you wear lip gloss or if you get all dressed up and look like a girl. Once that cage door closes, I'm an animal and I'm a gamer and I'm coming at you. She has got a definite mean streak. Vixen, a female fox, a spirited or fierce woman. Put your money where your mouth is, tough guy. Let's do this. What's the holdup? If they're nasty to me, then I just assume that they're just nasty people. And she's just playing the drums on her face right now, John. This is nasty. When are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. Never? Never. <laughs> I have a, a champion mindset already. I eat, breathe, sleep, wake up. It's constantly on the brain. That's all I think about. Pouring it on now! This is that crazy pace that Pena loves. Fighter out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of Spokane, Washington, USA. Five, oh, nine! Juliana, the Venezuelan big star. I feel like in school they always told you, do what you love and it'll never feel like a day of work ever again. I, I never really knew exactly what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do, but once I found fighting, I knew that that's exactly what I wanted to do and that was what I was passionate about. I'm not gonna let her take my baby, and I went in there with vengeance. Lisa! I love you, baby! I have some news. Amanda Nunez, I want to fight you. This has been something that's been brewing since UFC 200. That was, what, five years ago? You guys act like I'm just making this up or I'm trying to trash talk. This is actually facts that have happened in my career. Oh, uh, sometimes my head hurts. I swear to goodness, sometimes I don't understand. Oh, oh my goodness! He's standing here with his jab! The jab is just touching him! Oh, my oh, God! Oh, my God! Everyone dreams, but do you truly know how far you're willing to go to make them a reality? It's simple to think that you'll do anything, but typically the first obstacle deters many. But if you are courageous enough to venture further, the question turns from bravery to delusion. Do you have the discipline to continue a routine with no reward promised? This is the story of Juliana Pena in her quest for UFC gold. Juliana Pena was born August 19, 1989 in Spokane, Washington, and was the youngest of four kids in her family. Her father Ernie immigrated from Venezuela at age 14, and her mother Pamela is from New Mexico and is of Mexican and Native American descent. Growing up in an area where there weren't many Hispanic families, Pena's parents wanted her to be prideful in her heritage. Juliana says her home was loving, but her siblings could be rough at times. I was always getting the tail end of a lot of beatings. I have an older brother who's like obsessed with WWE and he was knocking us around all the mm -hmm. time. So I, I grew up aggressive, but I didn't really know where to channel that. Yeah. And I always grew up super tough. Pena learned tough love from her mother as well, who wanted her to be self-reliant. She kind of had her own thing growing up in her life where it was like she was always getting pushed down and never really had a voice. And she raised me as her last child specifically to have a voice and to stand up for myself and to not take any crap from anybody. And if somebody says something to you, then you push right back. Juliana says she wasn't pushed to do well in school, but she did enjoy sports, although teenagers teammates couldn't match her intensity. I was like the one on the team that was so competitive that was like wanting to win all the time and then I was grouped together with people that like didn't care and didn't want to win mm -hmm. and so I would always have this like massive frustration like why am I always getting overlooked like I, <laughs> I really care. After graduating high school in 2007, Pena was a waitress and attended Spokane Community College but still could not find anything she was passionate about until a recommendation from her sister 
a year later. My sister invited me to a woman's cardio kickboxing class. So I, I went with her and I threw my first punch and that was it. Pena would join Sig Jitsu fighting system under gym owner and instructor Rick Little. Sig Jitsu was a small MMA gym in Spokane, but with other future UFC fighters such as Sam Cecilia and Michael Chiesa in the same training room, it was the competitive environment she craved. Little gave Pena her nickname of the Venezuelan Vixen because of her ferocity. Juliana may have been a natural, but she didn't have complete focus on fighting. Rick, my trainer, was like, if you stick with this, you know, you can make a career out of this. Yeah. And I didn't believe him. I was going to college full time. I was serving full time and I was trying to fight full time. Yeah. And so at that point, it was just like, you got to pick. Do you want to yeah, be the best? A, yeah. yeah. You want to be the best server in the world? You want to be the best fighter in the world? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Pena raced to a 3 0 record in 2009 before having surgery for a torn ACL. While recovering in 2010, Pena contemplated a life without fighting and was okay with walking away from MMA, considering women weren't allowed in the UFC at the time. When are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. Never? Never. <laughs> But Little convinced her to continue competing, and she returned successfully in December of 2011. But the glory was short-lived. Two months later in February 2012, Pena would be walking in downtown Spokane when a drunk driver jumped the curb, hitting her and a tree. Juliana would shatter her nose due to a tree branch landing on her face, leaving a scar on the bridge of her nose. Pena, still recovering from the traumatic crash, was asked by Rick Little to fight two months later. She would lose to another promising fighter named Sarah Moraz by armbar. It was embarrassing because I, I took my very first loss in front of my entire hometown. So everyone that loves me, everyone that hates me, the whole damn city is there watching me. And it was the most embarrassing, mortifying, one of the most mortifying experiences of my life. Pena's arm was broken, but her ego took more damage. I was thinking, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a terrible spot in my life. Maybe this will uplift my spirits. Right. So when I lost to her, I was like, I'm done, I quit. I quit, it wasn't, I, I literally got hit and then two months later I was fighting this girl as the main event in my hometown. So after that, I was like double negative. I just got hit by a car, I just lost my first fight. I was I was done, I was like, I'm, I, I quit. Juliana stopped attending practice and thought about quitting once again. But Coach Little persuaded her to keep fighting, believing women would soon be accepted into the UFC. It's not just looks that can kill. Because of the increasing popularity of Misha Tate and Ronda Rousey's rivalry. I'm going to make it official right now. The first ever UFC women's champion, Ronda Rousey. And I'm presenting her with her belt. That December, UFC President Dana White announced women were now part of the promotion, beginning in 2013, and Ronda Rousey was named as women's champion. But Juliana's motivation was still fluctuating, training irregularly, and gaining weight. Little would schedule another short notice fight for Pena, giving her only two weeks to prepare. I'm 149 pounds right now. I have two weeks to cut like 22 pounds. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, we're going. So we took the fight and I missed weight by one pound. Oh. And I remember passing out in the sauna and Rick literally like grabbing me by my armpits and dragging me out of the sauna. I was like dead on the floor. I fought this girl in Utah and I lost a decision. Oh, so geez. I just got hit by a car. I just got my arm broken. I recovered, I quit. He's making me fight and I just lost again by decision. And so that was like three negative things and I was like, I quit like I'm done. But Penny's unknown path would receive clarity.
I never remember two men going toe to toe so diligently for 10 straight minutes. These, these guys want that contract so bad. I mean, this is their dream. It's in front of them. But what, the, what they're both saying, these are two walls colliding with each other and looking for a weakness. And it's just, this is just an incredible display of courage and skill. Oh, good so right hand by Forrest. And over the top. great opportunity it's a uh, it's a chance for for women to get out there and, and uh, showcase what they do so I think it's a, a great thing in April 2013 Juliana would travel to Las Vegas auditioning for the UFC's reality show the ultimate fighter for the first time in the show's eight years of programming females were contestants and coaches in the tournament to determine who would win a UFC contract. Pena made it through the casting portion and would have a preliminary fight against Gina Mazzani. Pena would dominate the bout and become an official member of the show. After the preliminary fights were complete, head coaches Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate made their team selections. You got the first pick. Uh, Juliana. That's a shocker. <laughs> But Tate's first pick would create a stir. Misha had a friendship with Juliana prior to the show, and this selection was seen as favoritism by other contestants, making Pena an immediate target. I'm gonna do Juliana versus Shayna. Juliana's first fight on the show would be against Shayna Baszler, a pioneer of women's MMA and a person Pena considered to be an idol. With a large gap in experience, Baszler felt she would cruise past Juliana. I can't even think of what they would tell her. Any, uh, stay standing, I'll still beat her up. Clinch up with her, I'll still beat her up. Take her to the ground, I'll still beat her up. I've been doing this for over a decade. I've fought the best girls in the world and she can't hold a candle to them. <laughs> with a submission victory and moving on Juliana Pena now, I don't think anybody on my team thought I was gonna win it doesn't matter if you wear lip gloss or if you get all dressed up and look like a girl once that cage door closes I'm an animal and I'm a gamer and I'm coming at you the victory proved Pena's ability but it did little to stop envy you're saying that I told the other team the matchups that's ridiculous that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life no, you told them. That's all there is to it. Okay, well, I didn't. We You're know you making told stuff them. up. We know you told them. You're so full of <laughs> It's hilarious. You're so... Wow. I think it was her, but even if not, I'm just done with her. What about you, Josh? You think I'm so rude? What have I done that's so rude? You're just annoying. Exactly. See? So that's why you guys are rude. <laughs> I'm not getting into this. Because I'm focusing on a competition that's a one-on-one -on -one sport. And I'm focusing on myself. Who else should I be focused on, Louis? Should I be focused on you? The only thing is that they you know how they are with her, right? She does come off more as a favorite. Tension was high on Team Tate, but Pena's extraordinary compartmentalization allowed her to focus on MMA and not play to the cameras. The way that you are in here is the way how you are as a real person, you know. So if they're nasty to me, then I just assume that they're just nasty people, you know. I hope you do that again. <laughs> me too. I wouldn't be hanging out with these people a day in my life if I wasn't in this house anyways, you know right, what I mean? Right. We need to get everyone to go cheesecake. Mm -hmm. I know you're done. I will. <laughs> in Juliana's semi-final fight, she would face Sarah Morass, the woman who broke her arm a year earlier. Pena had the skill to win, but her fortitude would be tested. The hope of the galaxy rides on your shoulders. Sometimes that hurts my feelings that they just think that I'm just this chump fighter that brings nothing to the table that's just going to get smoked. You know, kind of, it hurts, it hurts me, but I can't, 
I can't really be uh, worried about that too much. I'm not gonna let her take my baby, and I went in there with vengeance, and I got the victory. I'm, I'm really happy. Pena advanced to the season finale versus Jessica Ricosi. This fight will determine who will be the women's bantamweight winner of season 18 of The Ultimate Fighter. Juliana Pena pouring it on now. This is that crazy pace that Pena loves. You are the ultimate fighter. You win the six-figure contract with the UFC. You know, I didn't get in this sport thinking, you know, I want to be, you know, top 10 in the world. You know, I got in this sport trying to put some bread on the table and try to be the champ, you know. In my mind, I've been the champ for 24 years. And um, I just, I would like, like to see that come true one day. Juliana was set to make her USC debut in March 2014 at USC 171, but a freak accident while training caused her to tear an ACL, MCL, LCL, meniscus, and hamstring. The severity of her injury was thought to put her career in jeopardy. Fortunately, Penny would make a full recovery, but didn't compete until April 2015. It had been 16 months since her previous fight, but Juliana's tenacity and skills were intact. Well, Pena felt like a decision would not be enough here tonight. And she's just playing the drums on her face right now, John. This is nasty. Just over a minute now to go in the round. That'll do it. With one final elbow, Juliana Pena is back. That is the statement she wanted to make. Outstanding. And that looks like a future bantamweight contender, Juliana Pena. It was a long and grueling road, you know. I took a year off, and I feel like if I wouldn't have had to take that year off, I'd already be champ by now. So it's, uh, it's a long process, but I'm happy to be back, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to get to work. Pena's openness about a championship this early in her USC run bothered many. Her habit of not mincing words isn't for everyone, but six months later at UFC 192, it made for interesting fight week interviews. Yeah, you know, there there is a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, and, and uh, I feel like I, there's a chip on my shoulder every single time, you know what I mean? I feel like I always get counted out as, you know, some girl, oh, she, she doesn't have any momentum behind her and what have you, and she lost all her momentum, and she never fights and all this stuff, you know? So everyone's always running their mouth constantly, and I feel like I don't ever get, you know, the credit or respect that I deserve. Pena would defeat Jessica I in a close fight that was impacted by a point deduction. She battled whether to express her true feelings on the matter, disliking her loud mouth label. Were you surprised that even though you were in a top position and you received the foul, that they started you standing up, which would be considered an advantage for her because you were on top of her? Uh, that's none of my business. The refs are very competent around here and they do what they see as fit. You're very professional tonight. I keep messing up in interviews and running my mouth, so I'm trying to work on that. Six weeks later, the UFC brought Juliana to Australia for UFC 193, main evented by Holly Holm and Bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey. Pena was top five in the rankings and was nearing a title fight, using the trip to scout the two participants in the main event. Is it true also you find it hard to get motivated for these fights because you're not fighting Ronda for the belt? Like All of that feels like lesser. I've just been thinking about Rhonda for so long, you know, I wouldn't use the word obsessed, I would use the word dedicated, and uh, I am dedicated to making sure that, you know, I don't, I don't want to say bad words, but uh, I'm dedicated to making sure that when that time comes, uh, and when, when my day in the sun comes, it, it will be my day, and uh, I will be ready. Holly Holm is the new UFC Bantamweight Champion of the World! Oh my God! Holly Holm would complete one of the biggest upsets in MMA history. A new undisputed. But leaving Holm was an easier fight. This fueled Pena to continue her growth as a fighter. But at 26 years old, Juliana needed to mature outside of the octagon as well. I want to hold on to her. Just stay right there. That guy in the gray sweater, please. Two-pointing shot. He's right behind uh, the rock coach now. 
murder him, I'm telling you right now. Please push that guy away. A month following UFC 193, Juliana was arrested in her hometown of Spokane, Washington. After a night of drinking, one of Pena's training partners was badly injured in a street fight. Pena took him to a nearby bar to get cleaned up, but they were denied entry. You cannot deny me my human right, knowing the owners of the bar and the bartender who served me all night, to wash his face. An alleged altercation then ensued between her and two bar employees. But after agreeing to attend counseling, the two assault charges were dismissed. Are you her, ma'am? That's a big I'm not. Yeah, I am her, actually. My right hand is her. Your right hand? Yes, What's wrong with your right hand? My right hand. I had to defend myself. Defend yourself at all times. What did I learn from my last arrest? First, uh, don't go downtown by yourself. I realize that now that I'm you know, um, in Spokane and, and I've been living in this city all my life that I can't go out downtown by myself anymore. Um, I'm starting to get recognized a lot more and that was something that I wasn't expecting or didn't really want to face as a reality. I feel like I got profiled quite a bit. Also, um, I haven't drank since then. That was in December that I got arrested and I haven't touched alcohol since then and I think that that's a, a, a key thing for me. Twenty sixteen brought changes for the Bantamweight division and Pena. Misha Tate defeated Holly Holm, becoming the new champion. And Juliana began training in Chicago after head coach Rick Little recommended learning from Jiu Jitsu instructor Luis Claudio. With her legal issues cleared, she was booked to fight Kat Zunganu at UFC 200 in July. It would be the same event that Tate would defend her title against Amanda Nunes. Juliana's fight was viewed as a possible number one contenders match. Zingano comes out aggressively. Zingano with the clinch and a knee. We're gonna kick out that leg and sweeper. Very nice takedown, right in the side control. A beautiful takedown by Cat. Beautiful. Side control. And this is interesting, Mike, because Juliana has shown some excellent, excellent grappling in her career so far, but Kat is clearly out wrestling and negating that hook. But look at this, Juliana takes it back fully. Very nicely done, and right into the body triangle. Beautiful. That's huge for Juliana. How do you feel? Do you want to take her down? Do you want to punch? What do you want to do? She does not have the second hook, but she's doing a good job of holding her here. Good shots from the top by Juliana. Just a dominant round three. Completely dominant in this round. I mean, this is this all Pena. All three judges score this contest. 29-28 for the winner by unanimous decision, Juliana, the Venezuelan big star Pena. Pena started sluggish, but decisive rounds two and three gave her the nod. But her night was not complete, as she would be cage side for the main event between Tata Nunes. She got tagged. Yeah. She got hurt bad. Misha's getting flurried oh, on. She's down. The flat now, Misha. She's got her learning and choking. She tapped. Holy crap, Amanda Nunes is the new champion 135. And I'm next. I'm wow. next. That's my fight. Wow. Holy This is mind blowing. Great job done by Amanda. She got the first round finish. She's a new champ. And I just beat the girl that beat both of them, so I don't know what that says about me. Juliana continued with this narrative in the post-fight press conference, feeling she deserved the title shot because she was on a win streak and defeated Zunganu, who had wins on her resume against Tate and Nunes. I don't know what else. You know, what, I don't know what else I have to do. You know, I just beat the girl who beat both the champion and the champion's opponent i'm ready to go and, and get what's mine i have a, a champion mindset already i eat breathe sleep wake up it's constantly on the brain that's all i think about it, it is annoying you know but i know that in, in anything in life you got to work hard and, and you got to work for stuff and, and if i want this then i just have to keep working you know and and that's what i plan on doing and i think that that's the main focus is you know you want something bad enough and you're not going to stop juliana continued to pester amanda nunez for a championship fight 
Over the next four months, a Nunez bout would never materialize. She knows that, you know, I'm just getting warmed up in the third, so a five-round fight with me is going to be atrocious. So in December, she agreed to face Valentina Shevchenko in January of 2017. With Valentina and Pena being ranked number one and two, the winner was guaranteed a title shot. Nunes would even be in attendance to watch the main event. Juliana's confidence was brimming and felt Shevchenko's weakness wasn't grappling. But in this fight, Pena would learn a hard lesson. Do not dismiss any opponent's skill set. As Pena and Shevchenko, once again, Pena high amplitude takedown. She gets it. She's used a lot of energy this round. We'll see the cost. Looks like she is conceding the round to Pena. As she attempts an armbar here, she's got no time to finish it. Oh, she got it! Valentina Shevchenko by submission! One mistake cost Pena the opportunity she waited four years for. In the wake of the loss, Juliana went through a deep depression, but in a matter of months, her sadness would turn to joy. Later in 2017, she would become pregnant with her first child. And on January 18th, 2018, she gave birth to her daughter, Isabella. At 28 years old, Pena knew she would fight again, but wanted a proper balance in her career and personal life, deciding to take time off to experience motherhood. <laughs> and eventually, ease back into training. After being gone for two and a half years, she would make her return to the octagon in July 2019. There's a saying that MMA is a selfish sport, but becoming a parent altered the mentality in Pena. The motivation changes a little bit now that I'm a mom because I now literally have someone trying to take food out of my kid's mouth. And so that um, will to push forward um, by any means necessary is always pounding in the back of my head because I have a little one that I have to feed so it's definitely a bigger driving motivation for me. I had my kid, fighting is still here and now I'm ready to get back in there and uh, remind everybody who the Venezuelan Vixen is. With Juliana's newest fan in the crowd, she would face former UFC flyweight champion Nico Montano. Her trip is Pena, but she ends up on the bottom now. Yeah, that was a great takedown attempt as well. And Montano fell into it. She read the rhythm of it perfectly. Back to the head. Trying to escape is Montano. You hear the warnings from Rosenthal. Yeah, Montano's trying to grab a single and get back to her knees. But that's a bad choice to get someone like Pena. The third and final round between Juliana Pena, who is dealing with swelling below the left eye. Nico Montano, a pretty heavy cut. Perhaps new life for Pena after getting dominated. Pena swinging now. Through the first round, turned the tables in the second. And now keeping the fight where she wants it. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Juliana, the Venezuelan Vixen, Pena! The win wasn't the prettiest, and Juliana had to rely on her grit to get the victory, but she was satisfied with the result. <laughs> Many aspects of her life were different now, but the goal of becoming champion remained. Juliana's next fight would not happen until October 2020 versus Jermaine Durandamy, a former UFC featherweight champion who in December 2019 challenged Amanda Nunes for the Bantamweight title. There is the girl to beat Amanda Nunes. There she is. But it wouldn't be a Nunes title bout if Pena wasn't in the audience sizing her up. We're coming for you. Durandamy was an accomplished kickboxer like Shevchenko, but Pena was aware Jermaine could be a threat on the mat. You cannot underestimate any opponent that you fight. You have to obviously understand that this is MMA, mixed martial arts. It's called mixed martial arts for a reason, and all of these girls are well-versed everywhere. Juliana was number four in the Bantamweight rankings, and taking down the number one Durandamy would slot her for that elusive title fight. 
Him with the left leg does Duran to me. Juliana throw. Oh! Right. Same shot she got last but left with. Yeah, sends her off balance. 8 Eastern. 5 o'clock for the prelims. Pena, look at her. Oh! Left forward, lands a big left. Oh! And now Duran to me swinging big. She's the pouring clinch. the pressure on. Yeah, Pena's welcoming the firefight here. This is what she has to do. But Juliana still pressing in. Oh, nice nice takedown. Beautiful work there from Pena. Hand fighting here. Is this some this kind of an awkward position? Nice. This is between them. Pull your way, head right into the chest. She is tired over there. Look at her. You understand? Put it on her right here. Create a longer distance between the two. Nice right hand over the oh, top right of Pena. Works. And when Pena blitzes in, she's found a home for some of those punches. Durandami returns fire there. Going for a single leg. He's going to try oh, to get guillotine. The count. There's a guillotine. Not looks tight. That looks very tight. Durandami. Is wow. she going to get it? I think, she, I think she's out. I think she might be out. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Is she out? Is she unconscious? She's out. Yeah. Yeah. Durandami ends it by submission. What? History repeated itself. She was submitted by a striker, a seemingly huge setback in her trek for gold. In the past, defeats crushed Pena, but three months after her loss to Durandami, she was matched up against Sarah McMahon at UFC 257, believing a win in a relatively idle division could help her push for a title fight. Big hammer fist for Pena. Oh, nice job. But if you're Juliana Pena, you can choke with one arm. Sarah has got to try to get circling off to her left. It's Juliana. Still yeah. the Juliana Pena submits Sarah McMahon. Pena had a bounce back win to stay in the championship hunt, but her assertiveness afterwards was an eye opener. I have some news. Amanda Nunez, I want to fight you. Well, that's a big call out right there. Aggressive and confident with that shoot call out. For the she stars. wants the champ. You shoot for the stars, man. Juliana was enjoying the moment, but she understood the mission was not complete. Pena's campaign for a title shot was nothing new to the UFC or its fans, but with a stagnant division and an injury to Holly Holm canceling their slated bout in May 2021, Juliana knew if she pushed hard enough, a championship fight was possible. For me, styles make fights. I feel like stylistically I'm the worst possible matchup for her. I am her kryptonite and I do believe that she knows that because every time I fight, she always says one more and you got to fight one more and you got to fight one more. But this was mild in comparison to an interview she would give two days later. Let's go back. Do you remember when she fought Kat Zingano? Yes. What happened in that fight? She lost. She lost. She curled up in the fetal position and the referees had to freaking pull Cat off of her. She quit in that fight and she knows she's going to quit again. The ref's going to have to pull me off too. The girl gasses when she walks up a flight of stairs. I mean, she comes down to 135 pounds. She fights in a five round fight. She's going to gas, you know? So it's, 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 a, it's a terrible matchup for her. She knows it. I know it. The rest of the public doesn't know it. They think that I'm going to get murdered. But if that's the case and if that's how she feels, then come murder me then. Come murder me. Put your money where your mouth is, tough guy. Let's do this. What's the holdup? And it's that's all it. over! After stumbling early in her UFC career, Amanda Nunes built herself into one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time. With wipeout victories over legends such as Misha T. Trying to get a shell shot. She's got the choke. Hit it. It's all over. Ronda Rousey. She tags her again. Over and over. Amanda Nunes. Big combination. That's in. Chris Cyborg. And Holly Holm. Oh, Nunez was. Oh! Huge kick for Nunez. Amanda Nunez will quit in the jungle. Some wondered if the Lioness would ever face another challenger willing to go toe to toe. 
but the fiery Pena believed she was the perfect candidate to end Amanda's five-year reign as champion. A month later, it was announced Juliana's next fight would indeed be for the Bantamweight title on August 7th. But nine days before the bout, Nunes tested positive for COVID-19, postponing the fight. In an attempt to make sure she wouldn't be passed over once Amanda recovered, Juliana went to the lengths of traveling to Houston for the show and stepping in to do interviews. Pena even posed the question as a member of the audience during the week's press conference. Well, Juliana first. That's hey. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> This question's for Dana. Uh, where's Amanda, Dana? Where's Amanda at? <laughs> she has COVID. It's, it's not too late to get her here. I heard that she tested negative. Oh yeah? yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't, you didn't know that? Soon, honey. Okay, You'll so be fighting soon. When, when, Get back, enjoy when, the fights this weekend, and you will be fighting very soon. When? I heard December. Is that true? I don't know if that's true or not. All we'll right. see. We'll see how this plays out soon. As soon as we can make it, we'll make it. All right, thank you. All right? Thank you. Good to see you. In late August, the fight was rescheduled for December 11th in Las Vegas. Oh, sometimes my head hurts. I swear to goodness, sometimes I don't understand. Here's a piece that I read earlier today. Juliana Pena is going to get smashed by Amanda Nunes. Juliana Pena does not belong in there with Amanda Nunes. Okay. Now, if you're going to be right about that or you're going to be wrong, we're going to need to get under the unified rules at the agreed upon weight class at the agreed upon time between those two girls, and it's between them, and then we'll live with the result and have to speak about it. But you don't get to make that claim now and then bang your chest and act like you were right. Going into the fight versus Nunes, Pena was a historic betting underdog. If she were to win, it would be projected as the third biggest upset in UFC history. What are you thinking in your mind 24 hours before you can become the UFC champion when you've been here as long as you've been? Si se puede. I, I can do it. I, yeah, I, can I love do that. It. I can do it. I know that I can do it. Her calm demeanor was read by many as fear, but Juliana was steadfast in her belief that she possessed the tools to shock the MMA world go for the takedown um, but I would love to get in a firefight with Amanda Nunes and and I would love to exchange striking and then wait for her to gas since I don't gas and then I think I could take it from there so that would be my initial game plan uh, because you beat Sarah McMahon girl, after girl, I did beautiful that, for that, you you that, talk the truth and after 11 months of Pena's verbal blitz in 2021 Amanda became tiresome once fight week arrived with Pena's quips and analysis of the matchup. This has been something that's been brewing since UFC 200. That was, what, five years ago? You guys act like I'm just making this up or I'm trying to trash talk. This is actually facts that have happened in my career. Amanda and Juliana face to face after five and a half years and action, not words, would determine a winner. What's not gonna happen? You're not gonna be a champion, girl. Oh, we'll find out you Saturday night. We will find out Saturday night. Saturday. One of us is gonna be dead you, wrong. You find out. We will see. We will. Dateline Las Vegas. The electricity has returned full throttle to this unbelievable fight city. Ladies and gentlemen, we are. I think we're going to see some big things out of Juliana, the Venezuelan Vixen, coming soon. And ho hopefully, you know, in the next uh, maybe even year or two, we see you in the UFC fighting. And now Nunes Oh, yes. This is what Juliana wants, guys. Oh. This is the type of fight she wants. Exactly what she said. 
she was going to do. She was going to do. She just looked at me and said, I told you. She literally just looked over here and said, I told you. After 13 years, Juliana reached the mountaintop. From Sig Jitsu in Spokane to Mixed Martial Arts' biggest stage. Juliana Pena, you just shook up the world. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm crazy. I swear. I'm not the champ. I'm the champ. Okay, come on, let's take a picture. I don't know. Um, I feel like in school they always told you do what you love and it'll never feel like a day of work ever again. I, I never really knew exactly what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do but once I found fighting I knew that that's exactly what I wanted to do and that was what I was passionate about. It can take time to find a passion in life but when you do pursue it to the fullest. There will be failure. Time frames may need to be adjusted and of course the element of luck is needed. There are so many variables in this world that you might think you're not in control of anything. But there are two things a person can always control, their effort and belief. And with those two attributes, who knows how far you can go.